We're next going to hear from Dion Orr. Dion is the country director for Israel for Roots of Peace and the coordinator of the Mind Free Israel Coalition. I, I should say that uh, we had initially hoped to have the Deputy Defense Minister of Israel, uh, Mr. Vilnai, with us today. Unfortunately, his travels had to take him to New York after he met at the State Department today. Uh, I think Dion can very ably uh, fill in the gaps on the civic process inside of Israel. Dion? Thank you. Um, I think this uh, this past year has been a big, uh, really historic year for Israel in terms of. Can you hear? Thanks. It's been a historic year for Israel in terms <coughs> of mine action. Uh, I remember when I started working uh, with Jerry two years ago. And uh, I approached, exactly two years ago, we approached a school in Israel, which I knew, and I asked them to give a talk about landmines. It was Mine Awareness Week around the world. And the uh, headmaster of the school said, no, we don't want kids to hear about these bloody things. It's not something for children's ears. And Israel doesn't have, like, we don't have landmines around the school, so we really don't care about it. And that was practically what everybody else said it's from Parliament, from uh, 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 MOD, Ministry of Defense, and, uh, and, and schools, and so forth. So coming now out of the school with Danielle and seeing, we had a, like a briefing with the headmistress of the school, and she said also, please, Danielle, don't don't mention any blood or, or make it don't make kids afraid to go to Israel. But eventually, it was a very good, uh, very good speech that he gave at the school, and the kids were very interested to hear. And a similar thing happened in the last year in Israel. The, the landmine issue was something that nobody wanted to listen to uh, two years ago. And then through a lot of, a lot of uh, groundwork and going and tracing all the uh, affected communities, it's quite widespread. So Israel is about 1% uh, <coughs> of Israel. It's about 50,000 acres are uh, contaminated by uh, landmines. And, and this area is growing every year due to floods. So there are quite a lot of communities who are suffering from landmines, but they're not connected. So nobody has connected the dots before. Nobody has gone to all the communities, and they're including Jewish communities, farmers, Palestinian, Druze, uh, Israelis uh, uh, who live in the Golan Heights, who live on the Jordan Valley, uh, Palestinians in the West Bank, people who live in the Arava Valley, and even people who live on the road from the airport to Jerusalem, to the capital, have passed next to a minefield without knowing <coughs> something. So we had a lot of, uh, as Jerry calls it, speed dating with people and trying to connect all the communities who are affected. And actually the first, uh, the first time we had a Mind Free Israel coalition, the first time the name was coined and organizations actually joined the, the coalition was on, on the 4th of uh, February, two days before Daniel's incident, we had two organizations, the Association for Civil Rights in Israel and the Regional Council Center, which includes uh, more than uh, 40 regional councils all across the country, jo officially joined the coalition together with Survivor Corps, now coordinated by Roots of Peace. So we had a coalition. And then when Daniel uh, stepped on a landmine, and all the media, as you saw today, were following him, and the same experience we had uh, when we went uh, with Link and Jerry and the Tirza here to the parliament in Israel, the media follows Daniel. So the minute he le leaves the room, all the reporters, in Israel it's much more like, but we had here now Channel 2 News from Israel, that's the biggest news channel. So they follow Daniel, he's the story. Nobody in Israel really wants to hear about landmines, but Daniel's story is unique, it's inspiring, and nobody, not, nobody from the public, nobody from the parliament, nobody from government can ignore, can turn his back to Daniel. So we had a lot of trouble, for example, getting the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to discuss, <coughs> to discuss mine action, because it wasn't a priority. Or they said it's something that the Ministry of Defense is doing, so we have to hear from them. We don't know what to do. But once we came with Daniel, and once we had an invitation for him to speak at the Mine Ban Treaty uh, uh, meeting of state parties in Geneva a couple of days ago, which Israel is not a party, but was invited, Daniel was invited as a youth ambassador to speak there. 
Then the Ministry of Foreign Affairs wanted to be on board. They said, for Daniel, we want to be, so we have a standing invitation from the ambassador here in, in Washington who wants to meet Daniel and the delegation. And the same was in, uh, in Geneva, and the same back in Jerusalem. <coughs> now, <coughs> only a month after Daniel's incident, from no interest at all in Parliament. And it's not something that we've started. We had people from uh, the Arava Valley, we had Israeli farmers who served in the army, who knew the Minister of Defense, who wrote letters year after year after year, who, who appealed to the Supreme Court. We had all the time the same ha answer. Mines are a security issue in Israel. We are a country at war. We can't clean landmines. Definitely not for humanitarian purposes. The only time we would clean landmines is if the army, the military, requires that. So a month after Daniel's incident, we had a totally different uh, response coming from parliament and government. So the same people who said this is not an interest or we won't do humanitarian demining were actually saying the opposite. So we had the deputy minister of defense who couldn't come uh, uh, today to the event. We had him say a month <coughs> after he said in Parliament that the same, the official stance of MOD that we won't clean landmines, he came a month later uh, in a private meeting with Jerry and said, you know what, to be honest, we don't need most of these minefields. We don't need them, and I know it as a general in the army, I know that mines are actually a security hazard. We, r we might need the mines along the border with Syria and Lebanon, but we definitely don't need them along the border with Jordan. We definitely don't need them on the Golan Heights in, inland where Daniel got hurt and Jerry. And we don't need all the old minefields that were left by the Jordanian, by the Syrian, people say even by the British army. These mines we don't need. So following that, his leadership, and uh, the chairman of the Defense Committee at the Knesset, Zachary Negbi, we got 73 members of Knesset co-sponsor a bill. That's a lot, 73 in Israel, especially in current politics. You don't get, you don't get, th this means all parties, uh, all parties. Right. right, center, left, out of 80, out of 80 who could, who could sponsor a bill. We had 73, seven were out of the country or <laughs> sick that day. So 73 put their name on the, on the bill proposal. And uh, it passed, it got the governmental, government support. Because even you have 73 members of Knesset, if the government doesn't support the bill, uh, it, it doesn't pass through. It pass, doesn't pass through the channels, because there is, there is a, a coalition, and, and it's, it's quite strong, the, uh, the voting uh, patterns. So we got government support, we got Cross the board parliament support for the bill. Uh, we actually, n nobody knew anything about mine action, so we had, we had help, help from uh, Anmas here in drafting the bill. We had our uh, uh, legal advisor, Tir Tzalebovic, who's sitting here, draft the bill, and basically we fed it to the parliament. They didn't know anything, so we were the experts. We, we brought in uh, Ambassador Link Bloomfield and Jerry as experts to the uh, to the committee at the parliament discussing the, the mine action because nobody, nobody ever took this matter seriously. So we were in a position that things changed within a month. Th things changed very quite drastically in Israel and we had all the data and we had all the answers and people were asking the questions and we were feeding them with the answers. So currently now we're standing in a position that just this morning we got notice that there's a new uh, chair to the Defense, uh, Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee at the Knesset. Uh, Shaul Mofaz, a former Minister of Defense and Chief of Staff, and he's, he's, uh, he's going to promote the bill. We, we already had uh, contacted him, and we know that he's going to promote the bill, and hopefully in the next few weeks this bill is going to come, a new draft of the bill after it passed through all the governmental ministries is going to come to the committee and then presented to the <coughs> Knesset for the official, uh, what's called the first reading. It's actually the second reading at the Knesset, uh, and then there's a formality and it will come for a second and third reading that happened usually simultaneously, and we're hoping by the end <coughs> of this Knesset <coughs> term that will close in, in March, and maybe even hope like trusting uh, Tzachi Negbi, who's our, now uh, is the chair of the Mind Free Israel campaign, he said, no, let's do it on the 2nd of February 2011, That's, it has a nice ring to it and it's just 
few days before the anniversary of Daniel Yuval's incident. So it would mean that Israel would have completed this whole legislation process, which is quite complicated, uh, within a year's time from a little boy's uh, injury. And that would be quite history making in Israel. At the same time, we're, we have with us people here uh, who have the mining experience, who both in the army and now in the private sector, and they're partnering with us, with Roots of Peace, who's coordinating this campaign, to start in parallel to the legislation and not waiting for the bill to pass, starting pilot projects demonstrating how mine action is done according to international mine action standards, What's, what does it mean to do humanitarian demining, which we haven't seen done yet in Israel, what would it mean, and basically showing the public, and as you see the media is following it very carefully, showing the public that uh, mine action can be done, it's safe, it's not so expensive as people think, and it actually releases land for families to go hiking and skiing and playing in the snow, it releases land for farmers, it releases land uh, for uh, uh, religious and touristic sites like the baptismal site of Jesus, which we will hear about later. And it's really, it's a win-win situation for Israel, for America will support it, for the UN, and everybody who's involved in it. So, thank you, thank Dan. you. Thank you.